We're officially in the U.S., guys. We are back. Oh. Oh, Dennis, bring it so in. Oh, my God. <laughs> like a real hug. Oh, COVID-19, COVID-19. Yeah. Didn't think I was going to feel this, like, this, this much. Wait a second. Before we can get here, we have to go back a bit. Five months ago, we entered Mexico with two of our full-time RV friends, going on an epic RV trip through Mexico. After two wonderful months exploring, we took an unexpected hiatus self-isolating on the beach riding out COVID-19, before having to return back to the United States. We started our long journey back home, stopping in a wonderful new city, San Miguel de Allende, where we pick up today's vlog. So about leaving Mexico. A few videos back, we left Isla Aguada and started our journey north to make it back to the United States. We wanted to be back in Texas by the 1st of July, but since then some news has developed out of the U.S. about COVID-19. That have us slightly concerned. So we are returning back to the United States, but with a change of plans. We're only going to be there for about one month. We're going to get some work done on the RV, spend some time with family celebrating my birthday, getting a few things shipped to us that we haven't really had access to, as well as renewing our licenses. And the biggest change is we're also going to be applying for a temporary residence here in Mexico. Which is pretty rad. Okay, so here's the deal. As tourists, with a tourist visa, once we exit, we cannot re-enter Mexico with a tourist visa. Right now, because of right COVID now. regulations. Exactly. So we were concerned that if we left, we wouldn't be able to continue our Mexico adventures in the fall later because the border would possibly still be closed. And honestly, we don't want to leave. We yeah. love Mexico. It has been such a wonderful place to not just self-isolate, but to explore. The people have been so friendly. They're taking COVID very seriously here. It's really affordable to travel and live here. And honestly, it just feels right. So while we are returning back to the United States, it's with all intentions to pretty much come back to Mexico as quickly Straight as we away. can. Yeah. We've heard that uh, the process is a lot smoother to get your temporary residency if you start it with someone who knows what they're doing in Mexico. So we're gonna be meeting with someone today in San Miguel de Allende, who's going to help us with the initial paperwork and kind of understand the process of getting our temporary residence. She specializes in helping expats work with visas with the IMS, which is the immigration services here in Mexico, as well as the Mexican consulate in the United States. She does not want to be filmed, so unfortunately we won't be showing you any of that, but we will be filling you in on what exactly we have to do to make this process happen. But she's arriving probably, we're probably, she's already probably here. So yeah. we need to get going. We'll fill you in on the rest of the information as we drive to our next destination, which is Matehuala. We were there as our first stop in Mexico, and it's going to be our last stop. In Mexico. in Mexico. Full circle, baby. Full circle. It's pretty crazy that tomorrow we'll be back in the United States. That is nuts. I didn't really think about that. That is absolutely nuts. Okay. So, we'll fill right. you in in a little bit. to Matehuala. It is very warm. Like very warm. 94 degrees warm. And dry. And dry. Hot desert heat. And the wind, there is a breeze, but it's a very hot one. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because this was the first place we ever stayed at. And the first time we stayed here, it was really nice weather, like chilly. Yeah. I think we had our furnace on. The high was 65 <laughs> the first time we were here. And it was kind of rainy and overcast. Which is a very different experience very this go around. Different. But we wanted to catch you up to speed on what we learned after our meeting with Sonia. And so she kind of gave us a checklist walking through what we need to prove, which in this case for a temporary residency is a certain amount of income. So we there's a number each year that's based on the minimum wage in Mexico and you have to make a portion of that in income. And we have to prove with six months 
bank statements or um, possibly you can show like account history if you have a 401k sometimes that can be used if you take pensions you from the 401k, yeah. yeah so there's different ways that you can prove this and she you know so an expert like Sonia can help you work through that if you're applying yourself and then we'll start the application process online via email and then once we've submitted all of our paperwork, we go into an office in the United States. Yes. There's Mexican consulates all across the United States, um, but there's a lot in Texas, and we're going to be in Austin for quite a while. So we are going to be using the Mexican consulate in Austin. We're not going to go into all of the details about what it takes to actually qualify, which is why we met with Sonia. If you're considering doing the same, we suggest meeting with an expert like her. There are others throughout this country of Mexico that you can work with. You pay them a fee and they help pretty much make the process happen. We're still not sure which path we're gonna take because it is expensive to apply for this. There's major benefits involved with it, but if they open up the six month tourist visa again and we're able just to cross that way, it's a lot cheaper of an option that right. you know might make sense if we just wanna finish off a six month trip. We're just kind of keeping our eye on things, but we do have a little bit of a hiccup once we cross the border. We were originally planning to overnight in Laredo at the same state park that we were going to camp at, but that's closed down because of COVID during the oh, week. Great. So we need to find another parking spot. Now I am on the hunt for finding a new campground. And we recently found an app called thedirt.com. It's actually the number one most rated camping app in both Google Play Store and Apple. Mm -hmm. And it uh, has the largest network of campsites nationwide, even more than Campendium. So we just started, we just found it and we just started using it. And I ended up finding a new campsite for us to camp at. It'll be a long drive. So we'll definitely want to have some nice... Oh, it's Thelma! Thelma! Oh, no, estamos, es, estamos muy bien. Estamos en Matehuala. Dios mío, ya casi llegan a la frontera. Sí, casi estamos en la frontera, pero hace oh. muchísimo calor aquí. Yeah. yeah we're going to become Mexican residents. We're going to get... Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting our temporary residency so we can come back sooner if the border is still closed and that way we can keep coming and see more of Mexico and come back and visit you again. Oh, how nice. Oh, oh my goodness. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Wow, that I'm really happy to know that. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. It really is. How cool. Okay, you guys take care. We will. Miss you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. That was good timing. That was a nice little treat. That was nice. Yeah, I'm glad we got to tell her. Well, I've been saying we need to call her the last couple of days anyway, so yeah. that's cool she called us. We've been staying in touch with Thelma. Yeah. We'll have more on the dirt coming in the future. If you're interested in joining the dirt or finding out more about how it could help you plan your route as an RVer or a camper, we'll have a link in the description below. But other than that, I think we're going to get our last Mexican meal true mexican meal true mexican meal in mexico in mexico and the restaurant here at los palmas is actually really freaking good mm -hmm. like like i'm not lost on our being stacy raved about this place this the was her favorite restaurant time we were here until they turned around you know so this this will be a treat mm -hmm. plus now we don't, we don't want to cook, cook. <laughs> so last official hang with the new states before we cross back over into the u.s been doing this religiously every Monday night. Today's not Monday, but it doesn't matter. We've been doing this every Monday night for the last five months, having a watch party, watching each of our videos that we posted for the week without having to use our data. Can I offer you a beer because we can't take it with us? Like seriously? Yeah. We have yeah. too much alcohol on board now, so we went from being in quarantine and having an alcohol deficit to We got excited. Surplus. You know? <laughs> when alcohol Walmart, sales we reopened. We were like, ah, uh, ah, uh, we gotta get <laughs> stock up. We gotta get two cases. <laughs> hey! <laughs> How was there already a fly in here? <laughs>
I didn't know what I was getting into. It is a French press type of morning because it is way too early for me to be messing around trying to pack that little pod. Way too involved. It's like, it's a little after seven now. We woke up at 6.50. Liz is working on... A schmoody. A schmoody. For us to have something to, to eat. Well, we need a chop chop because We're we need to be eight. on the road at eight. Like we need to be literally pulling out of this place at eight because then we need to make it to Columbia before four o'clock because that's when the tip, the vehicle registration refund office closes, is promptly at four. So we would, we would rather go to Columbia because it's much easier to maneuver in the RVs than Laredo, but if we don't make it there by four, then we have to go to Laredo. So we need to get moving. You're never gonna believe it, but we're actually on time. Like. We're ready, pulling out at 8 a.m. as planned. Adios, Las Palmas. I wanna, it smells like diesel, like straight up diesel. So I wanna just look. We have a fuel leak. Welp, guys, minor hiccup. We have a fuel leak. How do you know? Because I can see it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it didn't pop up like a warning or anything. Fresh we smell no. the diesel. Right oh yeah, you can smell it right there. I knew I should replace those hoses when I replace that filter. It appears to me that it's the fitting that screws into. I don't know if that's the fuel pump, but the line that appears to be leaking actually goes to the fuel filter. I can't tell if it's the the fitting that screws into what I believe is a fuel pump or if it's the hose itself. Either way, they're both gonna get replaced once we get to somewhere, if we make it to somewhere. That's my concern right now. I really don't like crossing my fingers when it comes to mechanical business like this. Uh, but we don't have any choice right now. Yeah, let's roll. And we're off. So the weird thing is, I think it started leaking yesterday, but we didn't start smelling it until we fired up the Sprinter this morning, and then it idled for maybe three or four minutes, um, and then we started smelling it. It's definitely not ideal to be traveling with this, but at least we're headed back to the United States. This is not the only thing we need to get fixed on the RV. We've had several things kind of come up that need to either be replaced, addressed, installed. So it's definitely a well needed um, return because getting parts shipped here can be really expensive and difficult. So as hesitant as we are to return back to the US, there is definitely a purpose and good that will come from having some downtime to work on the RV. started the sprinter this morning we smelled uh, fuel like diesel fuel and I'm wondering like how concerned should I be about the leak where it's uh, it's not like squirting but it's definitely leaking if it's running fine it's not squirting out but you don't see it really running down drive it it's always a good idea to have someone that you can call <laughs> to get advice from on your RV, how things work, engines. This is Dennis's good family friend Robert. He's helped us out a number of times since we've been traveling. This man gets in his car, he sees me drive by, he gets in his car and follows me on the campus back to my dorm. Room. I didn't know he was following me until like, I, I saw his face as I drove by like a minute earlier and then all of a sudden he's like racing after me after I got in my car. He was like, hey, hey, come here. And I was just uh, 
older white gentleman. He said, are you a student here? And I said, yeah, I stay right here in, in Parker, in Parker Hall. And then I realized who it was. And then I remember the stories that I would hear about this man who was crazy enough. This was the president of this private university, a very wealthy man. And he was noted for some racist driven activities. And he said that my music was too loud in my car. It was offensive. I didn't have no beats in my car. I had a Plymouth Acclaim. A Plymouth Acclaim. I know you're like, what is that? Is that like a standing ovation or something? No, it's a car. It's a car. So anyways, uh, I'm just like, what is going on? And I, I realized who he was. He told me who he was. And I gave, he asked to see my ID. I gave him my ID. And he had asked him, are you a student here? And then he said that you're not a student here anymore. And he took my ID and walked away. And I got kicked out of college right what? now. Man. We're continuing to educate ourselves about the racial tension, the inequality that's happening in the black community. We'll link to the podcast that we're listening to down below. Cords. It was like yanking at the pole. Oh, yeah. And the ATM stole our card. Look at that. Literally. Oh, my God. None of my weather apps said anything about the storm. Um, we're going through one of the tunnels. And we hit the tunnel. <laughs> but the challenges are worth it. And no matter what you're doing, if you're doing something worth achieving or worth experiencing, there's going to be some hurdles. There's going to be some setbacks. And there's going to be some challenges because if it was easy and amazing everyone would be doing it so the point is we hope that we've shown you it's worth it we ended up choosing to go to the Laredo one by the time there was a few delays we would have just been cutting it it's potentially really short to get to we the would Columbia. have had a 10 minute window to be there before four o'clock to be able to make it to the tip 
um, the tip cancellation booth. We were not going to chance that. So, because then we would have had to double back 40 minutes back here anyway. So we just decided to come to Laredo. And it's a little bit wonky if you do come here to either register your vehicle when you first enter Mexico or to return your tip. So we talked about in the beginning, there is a temporary import for your vehicle permit that you have to pay. And we have a 10 year permit for our RV. So we're keeping that and the sticker is going to stay on our front window. Now our scooter, or if you have a car, a tow vehicle you bring with you, you actually pay, we paid 7,648 pesos when we first entered the country for our scooter. And that is now being refunded to us because we've just returned our tip. So we drove through a booth area. We actually didn't even have to get out of our car. And they just took pictures of the vehicle being returned, including the serial number. Right. And then they printed off a receipt showing us that we would be refunded the initial deposit within three to five business days to our original card. And that's so, all we gotta do. Yeah. Now we can cross the border and everything is good to go. Yeah, so make sure you come if you're returning to the United States and you want to get back your deposit, make sure you come to the Benercito before you actually cross the border. At Colombia, this is like all in one area rather than you having to stop at Benercito first, then get back on the bridge like we're gonna have to do. And the reason for that is there's actually two bridges, so two border crossings in and out right here. So the Bonercito isn't just at one or the other, it's right directly smack dab in the middle of both, so which both is the difference between this and Colombia. I will say that if you're in a rig any larger than us, Class C, 25 feet, um, I would shy away from coming to the, the look, to the Laredo crossing because the Bonaircito parking lot is very tight and very wonky. So I would shy away from that. The Laredo border crossings are also swamped. I asked her earlier, there's like an hour wait to cross the border back to the U.S. I said, is this normal? And she said, yes, every day from about 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then at nighttime, it slows down. But so this is a, you'll probably be in lines if you're trying to cross here. So, so Columbia is preferred. Columbia is definitely the easier route, especially if you're a bigger rig. It was actually much easier than I thought. Once we figured it out once, we're good to go. Yeah. Just like anything that new that you learn, you know, any new skill. This is definitely a skill of that we are developing. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, we're building our Mexico muscles. <laughs> I like that. We're officially in the U.S., guys. We are back. <laughs> it's pretty crazy to say that yeah. after five months, but. The border crossing was actually quite uneventful. Yeah, they were really nice, inquisitive, of course. You know, as if we had any alcohol, any fresh fruits or plants, or an excess of $10,000, which would be nice, but we don't have any of that. <laughs> uh, we do have a couple bottles of alcohol, but they didn't really care. Yep. Um, they did come on board and they actually looked around with a flashlight, checked in the pantry and the fridge, kind of moved a few things around, but it wasn't too intense. Yeah, so we, we got sent to the x-ray machine and they like, you know, looked around underneath the vehicle, I guess, to make sure no one's hiding anywhere inside or underneath of the RV and good to go. Decided that since we've crossed the border so early in the day, it's about five o'clock, eh, 5.30 actually, now that everything's said and done, that the new states are gonna continue on the way and we're going to stop at our own RV park and pretty much part ways today. So we're about to say our official goodbyes to the new state nomads. Oh. oh, Dennis, bring it so, in. Oh my God. <laughs> like a real hug. Oh, COVID-19, COVID-19. Yeah. We've been together the whole time. We've been we been 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 this is uh, Puesta del Sol on Mexico for a little while. We'll have more great content coming to you soon though. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, now would be the time to make sure you click the subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified every time, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It's free, it helps us out. And if you've enjoyed the Mexico travels or would like to see anything special when we get back into Texas, let us know in the comments below. We'll catch you next week. Adios. Adios, amigos. It just hit me that we're not in Mexico anymore and I'm getting a little emotional. Sad, dude. Yeah. Sad. Damn, I didn't think I was gonna feel this like this this much. It's just 
such a great place. <laughs> Is this the, uh, the blue light version of uh, ETRV? And that's what our RV was plugged into last night. Who tapped out first? Uh, I hope it's good. Does it, does it taste bad? I don't know. I don't know. I've never had a Coco Frio before. It's like a Hot Pocket. Except better. But it is like a Hot Pocket. It's like a Hot Pocket. Wow. <laughs> Graceful.